God be praised for another day where we can come together and open the scriptures. It's evidence of God's mercy, God's grace, and God's love. Matthew 18 is a wonderful chapter. We're going to hone in on verses 10 through 14. Uh, the parable of a lost sheep. This parable occurs also in Luke 15. It's the first of the uh, three uh, lost parables, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost son, or as, has, as it has been popularized, the parable of the prodigal son. God would have me come from Matthew 18 just to press a few points by way of reminder uh, to us. We'll uh, read the scripture, and then we'll pray and um, give not only the uh, audience that's present, but also the listening audience, the title that will be the lens through which um, God would have us uh, meditate on, on his word today. Matthew 18, verses 10 through 14, and the word of God reads, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. We operate from this parable in Matthew 18 and Luke 15 with the title, Parable of the Lost Sheep. But today God would have us think on this parable in both Gospels, the parable of the incomplete flock. And I think that if we really meditate on it, we'll see that it's not just an issue of semantics or wordplay, but it tremendously changes our outlook on what it is we do when we come together as Christians and what it is we should do as we witness the gospel to all people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning, that it is your mercy and your grace that allows us to come together to open your scriptures, to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. Heavenly Father, it is our prayer that you increase and that we decrease. To that end, Lord, I present myself as a living sacrifice unto your altar to be used of you, that my words be not mine but yours, that my thoughts be not mine but yours, that any actions, be they demonstrations or metaphors that I use, be not mine but yours, for we would see Jesus. And it is in your Son's name that we bind any spirits of Antichrist, any unclean and foul spirits that might seek to hinder us. We cast them out in his precious and mighty name. For we recognize that you are light, and in you, O Heavenly Father, is no darkness. We are of a mind to confess our sins before you and to forsake them. For we would mirror your light, which is absolute. Show us any leaven. Show us any secret sins. For we seek to be diligent about being conformed to the image of your Son, our brother. We would be united in faith. 
coming into the knowledge of the Son of God so that we might be that perfect church and that we might grow into the measure of the fullness of the stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. It's in his name we pray. The parable of the incomplete flock. By way of introduction, oftentimes this parable in Matthew is ignored and we rush to Luke 15 to discuss the parable of the lost sheep because it proceeds, as I mentioned, in, in the brief introduction before I read the scriptures because it precedes the parable of the lost coin and the parable of the prodigal son or the lost son because we often think that that parable is more rich due to its placement than this parable in Matthew 18 the parable that speaks of the lostness or the waywardness of sheep in the world, which precedes the parable that speaks of the lostness of the possessions, our own possessions, and our own temples. That parable of the lost coin that also precedes the parable of the lost son that bespeaks our own lostness in the household of God. Mm -hmm. See, we're good at assigning labels, saying this person is wayward and that person is lost. But how often do we consider the fact that if one single soul is lost, then the flock is incomplete? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that is what the Lord has been ministering to me on. Uh, very heavily over the last few weeks that I've been away. The parable of the incomplete flock. And we'll look at several scriptures to amplify the points that the Lord wants to remind us of. But the first point is this. That as sheep we are to pray for one another, P-R-A-Y, and not to pray on one another, P-R-E-Y. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 34, the opening verses. The first point is that as sheep, we are to pray for one another, P-R-A-Y, and not to pray on one another, P-R-E-Y. Ezekiel 34, the opening verses, and they read, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe ye with wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Now this is in the Old Testament, and the shepherds, Ezekiel is addressing, most specifically, are the kings of Israel. Kings like Saul, in 1 Samuel, who gave in to rebellion and witchcraft, and contributed to leading the people astray. Kings like Solomon, in whose <coughs> excess, allowed the pagan gods of foreign lands to infiltrate.